Hi students, I hope you all are keeping fine. Once again I am back with another short video clip on the chapter If by the famous English poet Rudyard Kipling. We have already discussed the first two stanzas of that poem. The two stanzas speak about lot of traits which help a person to become a successful human being and I hope that most of you have internalized the traits discussed in the first two stanzas. Now we move on to the third stanza of the poem If by Rudyard Kipling, the third octave in the poem If by Joseph Rudyard Kipling. Listen to this reading. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toes and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. Now we are going to deal with the first two lines in that stanza. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toes. The first two lines give a beautiful image. When we go through the first two lines of this stanza, a particular image comes to our mind. The image of gambling, the image of a gambling table comes to our mind when we go through these two lines. These two lines speak about the wealth that you earn at the gambling table. You play gambling throughout the day and you amass a lot of wealth and those gold coins are heaped up on the gambling table. Those gold coins are piled up on the gambling table. Before leaving the casino, before leaving the gambling house, you are willing to take a great risk. You are out there to risk everything that you earn that day. You are out there to risk everything that you have amassed that particular day for a noble cause. So before leaving the gambling house, you make one more determined effort. Make a pitch is an idiomatic expression which means make a determined effort. Now you are ready to make that determined effort. What is that determined effort? You are going to turn the dice for one last time. You are going to toss the dice for one last time, forsaking everything that you have earned for a worthier cause, for a noble cause. Here, in these two lines, a particular trait, a quality is highlighted. The quality discussed in these two lines is our willingness to take risks for nobler course. Our willingness to take risks for a noble or a worthier course. Just think about the words of Muhammad Ali. Those persons who do not take risks will accomplish nothing in their life. So taking risks is one of the qualities of greatness. Here the poet says we have to take risks. We have to take risks for worthier course. That quality is highlighted and apart from that quality, one more trait is discussed, our willingness to take a determined effort. Now we move on to the next two lines in the third stanza. And lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. Now you have taken that risk, you turn the dice, but unfortunately, now you find that you lose everything. Now you find that you lose everything that you have occurred in your life. Another important trait is discussed. Even though we lose everything in our life, 
we should never breathe a word about it we should never breathe a word about it what do you mean by that expression we should never breathe a word that means we should never speak a word about that disaster about that catastrophe that has happened in your life about that great loss never utter a word about your loss so this is a sign of greatness this is a quality of greatness never breathe a word about our loss usually most of us whenever we have a loss whenever we have a failure in our life we start complaining about it we definitely have lot of regrets about those losses those failures in our life but here the poet says never breathe a word about our loss don't cry over spilt milk it is of no use now we move on to the next few lines in the poem if by rudyard kipling if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them hold on everything is lost but you do not speak anything about your loss to others and you have to start from your beginnings go back to the beginning and start from there and you should have that ability to gather all those resources to master all those resources what are those resources what are the resources of a human being the resources of a human being are the first one mentioned in the text is in the poem is heart seat of all your emotions the second thing is nerve that means our brain or intelligence and the last one our sinew sinew means our muscle strength our physical strength so these can be considered as the resources of a human being the most important resources of a human being the seat of emotions our heart the emotions the intelligence and the physical strength try to gather all these muster up all these and you have to continue your effort even though these resources have been tired out even though these resources have been exhausted we should have the courage to muster up all these resources and continue our effort go back to the beginning and start everything again with a regained vigor and energy so that idea is discussed here in these lines another important idea which is emphasized in the third stanza even though you have lost everything even though everything is worn out your energy is completely used up your resources have been completely exhausted but there is that will here will is personified and the will says to you gives that beautiful instruction to you piece of advice to you hold on keep going we should never give up so this stanza also speaks about some of the traits of greatness some of the qualities of greatness some of the signs of greatness which help a human being to become a perfect person now i am going to read out the last stanza of the poem if by rudyard kipling just listen to this reading if you can talk with the crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you if all men count with you but none too much if you can fill the unforgiving minute with the 60 seconds worth of distance run you worse is the earth and everything that is in it and which is more you will be a man my son so the first two lines in that stanza if you can talk with the crowds and keep your virtue or walk with the kings nor lose the common touch the first line if you can talk with the crowds what do you mean by that expression if you can talk with the crowds a crowd consists of 
different types of people. You can find great human beings there. You can find good persons there. You can find people who belong to different walks of life. You can also find scoundrels, rascals, villains, everyone in the crowd. You should not be afraid of dealing with crowds. You have to interact with all sorts of people. You should not fear about it. Interact with all sorts of people. But the most important thing is that even though you interact with all types of people, you should not lose your virtue. Even though you interact with villains, scoundrels, rascals, you should not lose your virtue. Interact with everyone. So that is another trait which is highlighted in the last stanza of the poem, If by Rudyard Kipling. Then the second line, walk with the kings. What do you mean by that expression, walk with the kings? That means you have to socialize with the important people in the society. Kings can be considered as a symbol which stand for. The expression stands for important people in the society. So walk with the kings is an example of a metaphor that means we have to socialize with important people in the society. But another striking point discussed in that line is you have to walk with kings, you have to socialize with kings, important people in the society, but should not lose your common touch. Common touch again has a symbolic meaning which refers to humility. Now you become a great human being, you have a great status in the society, you have a good job, you work with important people in the society, but you should never lose your humility, the quality of being humble. These two lines also speak about some important ideas, some important human values which help a person to lead a true life. Now we move on to the next two lines. If neither force nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. You should have a balanced mind, a poised mind. Now you cannot be hurt by your force. You cannot be hurt by the words and deeds of your enemies. And another important idea is that we should not be hurt by our loving friends. Usually we are prepared for our foes. We are prepared for our enemies, but we do not doubt our friends. But when you become a great human being, you are not hurt by loving friends. You are not hurt by the words and deeds of your loving friends. So this is another trait that we should develop to become a great human being. And the next line. If all men can count with you and none too much, that means everyone may depend upon you, but you should not depend upon others too much. You should be self-reliant. You should not depend upon others too much, but others may depend upon you. That is another trait which is highlighted in the last stance of the poem, if by Rudyard Kipling. Now we move on to the next two striking lines in the last stance of the poem, if. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with the 60 seconds worth of distance run. So these two lines clearly speak about the importance of time. The expression used there is unforgiving minute. What do you mean by that expression unforgiving minute? It means that time does not forgive anyone. This particular expression reminds us of a very famous proverb, time and tide wait for none. 
clearly speaks about the importance of time and that idea gets emphasized in this stanza too. We have to fill the 60 seconds worth of distance run. That means each and every second in our life is very important. Here a metaphor is used. Life is compared to a race in which each and every second is very important. We have to spend our time fruitfully. We have to spend our time effectively. Never waste our time because time does not forgive anyone. Time does not wait for anyone. So this idea gets emphasized in those two lines. Spend our time fruitfully. Spend our time effectively. Now we move on to the last two lines of the poem. If yours is the earth and everything that is in it and which is more, you will be a man, my son. The last two lines in the fourth stanza, the last two lines of the poem speak about that important idea. If you imbibe all the traits discussed in the poem, if you acquire all those beautiful humane values, definitely you will own the world. The world will be yours. You will be a perfect man. You will be a perfect human being. So the entire poem speaks about so many beautiful traits, so many beautiful qualities which help a person to become an ideal human being, a perfect man. That is all for the day.